Now we will talk about the main characteristics of these types of applications. Every smart device application that we develop will always have to be partially executed on a web server. This not only applies to line of business applications, that is to say, a smart device application that is only part of an enterprise application, but also to consumer applications, that is to say, applications designed to be uploaded to the markets of the corresponding technologies and which can later be downloaded by any user in both free and paid versions. There are numerous examples of this type of application. Between these two possibilities, we have company to consumer applications, which are developed by a company for its clients and also to expand its user base. Our event day application can be considered a hybrid because part of it will be focused on the attendees of the event in question, a front end, and another part will be used by the event's organizers to change data in the database using mobile devices, that is to say, the back end. In sum, we may want to publish, create a web front end, for the event's attendees to use a browser in any computer connected to the internet to access information about the sessions and everything else. Also, we may want the front end to run on a smart device. In addition, just like we have a web backend, we may want the backend to work on the device. A significant aspect of the backend, which works just like the front end, is related to security. Obviously, not any user will be authorized to make changes in the application's database, which will be centralized in the web server. To do so, we will have to also incorporate security modules in smart device applications in order to determine who the authorized users are, and even limit the actions they can run on the various application modules. So, in this way, with the backend and mobile devices, authorized users will be able to change the details of a session a second before it begins. Okay, just like Genexus enables us to develop applications in .NET or Java for the web, it will also allow us to develop applications for iPhones or iPads in Swift language or for Android in Java. As a result, our application is multi-platform once again. We just saw this when we showed the applications because there was an app that behaved very similarly to an Android application when running on an iPad. But we also programmed some differences in each case. This will also be taken into account in Genexus. We will develop basically the same app, but we will be able to program or design specific features according to the platform in which it will run. However, the application will be basically the same. This will be achieved using the Deploy to Cloud property. An important objective for smart devices is to allow the application, or part of it, to keep running when it isn't connected to the internet. When using this application, we will want the user to continue viewing all the conference schedule and all the related information even when it has no internet connection. Then, when the connection is restored, the application will automatically update its data, which will be stored in a local database in the device, synchronizing with the server, receive. Since the user will have marked some sessions as favorites, it will also send this information to the server during the synchronization process that is to say, when sending the synchronization data, updating the central database. However, some tasks will require accessing the web server, whether due to their sensitivity, tasks that must be validated in the central database, or due to the frequency with which the data is changed. These tasks must be executed online. In this case, for example, the login operation will have to be made online, and the panel showing the tweets should also be online because tweets change continuously and very fast. Therefore, we can choose which objects of the application can be run offline and which cannot. At the end of this course, we will talk again about offline applications. It's important to remember that online applications will not have a local database, and that they will always be connected to the web server to obtain their information. Keep all this in mind. In a while, we will talk about the architecture of these types of applications, which are online applications. 
We know that the user's experience is an essential characteristic of smart device applications. Each platform has its own guidelines regarding the app's look and feel, that is to say, how the applications should look, how the actions should look, and so on. In addition, we will want smart device apps to integrate with the device's native features, both in terms of software and hardware. For example, to have them integrated with the device camera, with the program to make phone calls, with the GPS, and so on. Users will require their experience with the apps in their device to be consistent with the rest of their experience using the other native applications running on that device. Therefore, those applications developed for smartphones and tablets must always be native apps. For example, in an iPhone, to the left of the screen, we see the native contacts app of the device, which has an action bar at the top. This is to show the actions that can be made on this screen, including a search feature. On the right, we see the application developed with Genexus for the event day application we mentioned, and they look very similar. Also, the name of the screen being displayed and the search bar are at the top. The information displayed is in the middle of the screen. In one case, it's the contact list, and in the other, it's the speakers list. Below, they have the menu as a series of tabs with certain colors. When the screen or the menu items are selected, it's colored in light blue. Otherwise, it's gray. In these cases, this would be an iPhone 7. Now, we will use another technology. For example, on the left, we see the session screen of the Event Day app for an iPhone, and on the right, we have the same application, but this time for an Android phone. We see that there are differences as well. For example, in the iPhone, the menu is always visible as tabs in the lower section of the screen. Meanwhile, in an Android device, this initial menu with initial options will be available through a button. However, this button will not be visible on the screen as tabs. It will be an independent screen. In addition, in the iPhone, the back option is in the application. In an Android phone, it's a button of the phone itself, and it isn't incorporated into the application. If now we look at the details of a session, we see that in the iPhone we have this icon, which is the iOS universal icon that shows a list of actions to run. In this case, for example, we can add this session to the calendar, which belongs to the device. By pressing Schedule, we will open the Calendar app to schedule it. On the other hand, in Android, it'll depend on the operating system version we're using, but three dots will be displayed to show these same actions at the top. By selecting Schedule, we will open the calendar program of the Android device which is different from that of an iPhone. So, as we were saying, in an iPhone, we can go back to the object that called this panel by incorporating this option into the application with a button displayed at the top. On the other hand, in Android, we have the back button.